right, so we'll call the meeting to order. Still don't have everybody that we expect to be here, but um, we are six, six o'clock, so we'll get started. Uh, first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Um, the agenda tonight um, is to go over the town, uh, the first half is to go over the town meeting day uh, informational pieces of the budget and and the articles, and then to follow that up with our normal um, scheduled meeting, which tonight isn't very large, so, and then to be done. So, unless anybody has anything to add or amend to the agenda, I just need a motion to accept it. And I see uh, the university has signed on. <laughs> the University of Lindley. Second. All right. Favor? Aye. 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 Great. And we will probably, we, we had an informational hearing um, a week ago. I'll probably breeze right through the articles kind of quickly. Um, when we do get to the, uh, the select board open positions, uh, once again, we'll allow the candidates, if they are here, to to go ahead and take a five minute or less uh, introduction of themselves. And probably since um, since Wayne went first last time, we'll let Gene go first this time if he's here. Just makes it fair that way. And then, um, and then we'll move on to the budget. Uh, when we get to the budget, I'll probably just do kind of a macro view of the budget. Um, you know, kind of overall revenues, costs, differences, and then any, any, any um, reasons for the differences that are in the budget. If anybody has any questions uh, in a certain department or something like that, we can answer those at that time. And, uh, and then we'll be done and we'll move on to the second part of the meeting. So, Hey, Chris. So Chris, if anybody joins by phone that we don't know, like we can, everybody else currently has a name on it, but if there's somebody who's joined by phone, I think we should ask who it is just to identify them for the minutes. And sure. Um, since I have to take the minutes tonight, cause Lisa's out. Um, if I get, you know, if I need you to stop for a second so I can catch up, we'll do that. But just if you see anyone sign on, it's a last time in the minutes we had to put a phone number in cause we didn't know who it was. So oh, right. yep. we should just stop and ask if that's. Everybody's good with that. Sounds good. Chris? Oh, or, yeah. Hey, it's Robert Franks up at Hooper Hollow Road. Hello. I wanted to say hello to you and Therese and Dave. Hey, Dave, how are you? Not too bad. I'm sorry, I stepped away. I, I know there were uh, you were uh, organizing the agenda. I just want to uh, share with the town, the road crew, Dave and the boys up here at Hooper Hollow are doing a, uh, an excellent job this winter. Oh, good. Good to hear. Can you share that with them? Because I, I try to wave to Dave and run down to thank him, but uh, he does his work and gets out of here. Okay. Yeah. I'd be happy to tell him, Robert. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Therese. Thank you. Here, it's been definitely a challenging winter with all the different events that we've had. So it's good. Yeah. To thank you for the comment, um, Bob. Yeah. Well, they're doing a great job. And like today, we were supposed to get an inch of snow, and I think we have five now. So, <laughs> <laughs> not right. Welcome to Vermont. Uh, there you go. That's kind of the new joke now, the road crew. We say we're going to get between an inch and 22 inches. So, that's yeah. an inch and a foot. Yep. Yeah. We just don't <laughs> seem to know from, they don't know. So, we're, uh, so we kind of joke about it. Who are they anyway? <laughs> Yeah, I, you mean the ro the weatherman? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Therese. But no, you're right. I know we couldn't be wrong that often and keep our jobs, but uh, somehow they manage. So, but yeah, I mean, partly I, cloudy, partly sunny. What's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate it, and I will um, make sure that Dave and and Alan, those guys know. So thank you. You're welcome. So we um, the first part of the warning. Um, uh, you know, the first is, is town moderator. Um, I believe, um, that that hasn't changed and that, um, and that we're looking at the same moderator as usual. So Mr. Benson, I believe is the only one on that one. And then there's the town clerk, town treasurer, which normally it's the same nominee for each position. 
and Pam Brown is will be on the ballot for that one, um, as she's our current one. <clears throat> and then we have two select board positions. The way they're staggered, there's always two select board positions that come available at each turn. Um, so the first one's a three-year term <clears throat> uh, to succeed Mo, because Mo has decided to retire from his position um, after all his many years of experience and and dedication to the board. He's taken all his comp time somewhere else. So, um, and then currently we have uh, Wayne Townsend and Gene Cross that are running for that seat. And that's a three year seat. Um, and, uh, and then we have um, another select board position for a two year term, uh, which is currently the, is currently the seat that I'm in and um, and uh, Brady is chewing a really loud bone tonight. So <laughs> Heck it on. my feet. So, um, <clears throat> and then we're going to get into the, um, the listers. There's two different listers um, pieces on here. Um, currently there are no listers assigned to the ballot. Um, the, th the first is a three year term with a lister uh, that is not running. And then the second one is a two year term lister position of which um, at this point, um, Luis um, is running as a writing candidate for that piece. Um, yep. We have the, uh, to elect uh, the grand juror, which the grand juror is still. Stan Capron. Stan Capron. And he's running unopposed. Yeah. And the um, elect a trustee of public funds is which, vacant which is vacant that was penny griffin's um spot and i don't believe there's nobody on the ballot for that one correct? no no nope. <clears throat> uh, and then we get to the budget so at this point what we'll do is um last time we let um gene and wayne kind of just talk about themselves a little bit for anybody that's new to the town or new to the process typically our process is a really you know bethel has a really unique you know, old um, process of, you know, doing everything from the floor, which is, you know, for anybody that hasn't been a part of the small town of Bethel, you know, a majority of towns across the United States and Vermont do things mostly by um, Australian ballot. So that's, you know, a lot of, a uh, lot of things done remotely. Um, and then on town meeting day going and cast and ballot. And Bethel, we typically, we do a because we're a small community, we're able to gather usually at the gymnasium and go through all of our town meeting days and everything is done through the floor. So electing our our candidates, um, all of our elections are done from the floor as well as all the ballot, uh, on the budget and, and all the items are done that way. But due to COVID this year, <clears throat> um, we're not able to host in the gymnasium just due to um, the amount of occupants that we could have. It wouldn't be fair. We wouldn't probably be able to have more than 40 people. Um, so we chose to, uh, or mm. the, allows the select board this year to chose a different method, which we did Australian ballot. Um, so typically you would see Wayne and Jean on town meeting day. They would, uh, during that time, somebody would just make a motion to nominate somebody and they would second. And then, you know, then you would have a candidate or two or three or however many. And then after everybody gets an opportunity to speak for a couple of minutes from the floor, if they choose to, and then, and then we um, will either, depending on how many people, but sometimes it's a voice vote. Um, and then if it's too close and it goes to a ballot. So this year, because we're doing everything through Australian ballot, um, we have allowed the candidates to at each meeting to just you know, give a couple of minutes about themselves, why they're running. And, and so at this point, I was going to let um, Gene Cross go first. I don't see him on because we had Wayne go first last time. But Wayne, if you're ready. You... Can I... Owen's raising his hand. Hey, Chris, what happens for all those seats that aren't filled? Like, does somebody else do those roles or what? So what, what happens... Through the election process at town government is so first first we go to ballots. So um, 
And, oh, the other thing I just want to say, if you are um, on the phone and you're not talking, just make sure we mute, mute, because even though you may not be saying anything, the feedback through the um, through the comms is, is a little um, sketchy at best. So, um, so typically what will happen is um, if you're elected through the ballot or on the ballot, and we get some feedback from somebody. Um, or you, or you can do a write-in piece, which in this case, depending on how many um, our voter registration, it's a percentage of the voter registration, which I think in this case, we're saying somewhere around 16 people. So you'd have to at least have 16 people that would, that would do a write-in for a piece. If at, at the end, if there are still vacant positions, which we anticipate there will be, um, and then usually what we'll do is we'll advertise it um, and then depending on if anybody puts their name in or if they're qualified or then the select board will appoint. So there'll be appointees. So the select board would appoint, is it, is it for the whole term, Teresa, or is it just for that year? It's just for that year. You just appoint for the year. until yep. the following um, town meeting. So like we, sure, there'll be a list or opening. And um, so we know we're going to have a couple openings and, um, but we that's what the select board will advertise they'll interview and then they'll go from there i mean right now we're expecting there will be a lister position open and then probably the trustee of public funds does that sound right trees yep so um on that and we have to do that before um with the appointing positions if they're not filled on town meeting day so chris when somebody gets appointed it's, it's Robert. Uh, Therese, you mentioned a position regarding some type of financial um, responsibility that's vacant. No one's running for it. Can you can you tell me what that was again? It's the trustee of public funds, and that currently is Carol Ketchum, Penny Griffin, and Rick Benson, and they manage uh, cemetery money. Um, they manage a couple of bequests, so they Great don't money. run the town budget. They have limited, you know, money that they look that they um, that they oversee. So there's there's no one running for that position as we speak. Right. I know there's at least one person interested in it. So what'll happen is if no one run, wins the write in, if no one does a write in cam campaign, excuse me, then what'll happen is. The select board or myself will reach out to the current public, the trustees of public funds, Carol Ketchum, Rick Benson, we'll take any applications and we'll run them by that, those two on that board. And then um, we'll get, we'll interview and they'll get their recommendation. So it's, they're not actually overseeing the big chunks of the town budget, Robert. It's just cemetery money, a couple of bequests, things like that. Okay, I understand. Oh, good. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I had one more question, which is just, uh, just cause I don't know, um, when somebody gets appointed, do they, how do you, how, do they get to agree to that? <laughs> and like, yes. how do you, okay. <laughs> how do yeah, you if it's a right? Yes, like say, say you got written in for um, somebody, say someone wrote you in for something, yeah and you got 15 or 16 votes or more, you don't automatically get the position. You have the right to say, hey, I did not campaign for that. I don't want it. If someone is appointed, they have, they have put their hat in the ring and probably supplied a resume or answered some questions, um, and they want to be appointed. Dave Eddy was appointed when, for, when somebody got done. He interviewed, the select board interviewed a few people, and, and he was appointed for his first year and then he ran in March, so. So what we'll do, um, I do see that Jean just popped on Wayne. So uh, Jean, uh, we were at the point um, right now where we were talking about candidates for the open position. And um, I, had, I had spoke that last time I'd let Wayne go first. Um, so this time I was gonna let you have the opportunity to go first, make it fair. And you weren't here, so I was gonna have Wayne go, but now that I see you pop on, if you're good, why don't you uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself, Gene, and, and why you're running for the position? 
Uh, thank you for the invitation and thank you for the opportunity. Um, uh, a little bit about me uh, in a nutshell is that I've had uh, 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 an adult lifetime experience in a variety of places and a variety of communities, all of which have taught me how to relate to other people, how uh, different communities uh, address different kinds of problems. I really appreciate the whole idea of uh, town meetings and uh, the democracy that really flows uh, in those and the democracy, the person to person kind of democracy that I have found here and chosen here uh, in Vermont. Uh, this is a great community. Uh, I am really, really, really glad that it's one that I chose. I think one of the things that uh, Bethel needs uh, above all else is uh, this recommitment and rediscovery of revitalization and how that can impact us all. And that does not only mean uh, bringing new people and new families into the community uh, that will benefit us all but it also means retaining those that we already have, especially those who are being negatively hit by the coronavirus. Uh, one of my favorite places to eat uh, in Bethel has been the Creek House Diner and we have not seen that open since everything was shut down. I want to see that uh, thrive. I want to see uh, everything on Main Street thrive. I want to see uh, this community uh, with uh, the revitalization of the sense of community that we've enjoyed since Irene, but I also want to see uh, our small businesses thrive in ways that uh, this virus has uh, prevented them. Three things, one, a welcoming community, welcoming to new businesses, welcoming to new families. Second, uh, the select board using and leveraging all of its boards and committees and neighborhood or, or community organizations to do what they can to address that issue. And third, uh, reaching out as a select board and as a town uh, to uh, apply for and receive and put to good use all of the uh, state and federal resources that we can marshal grants from private organizations in order to make that happen. I would be honored uh, to serve on the select board uh, and I would be honored to uh, speak for all of Bethel's residents, uh, those that I've known for years and those that I are still newcomers to me. So that's who I am and that's what I will try to bring. All right, thank you, Gene. Hey, Gene, this is, this is Robert. Yes. Uh, Chris, or, can you hear me? Yes, I can. So if you were given the keys to the town of Bethel and with regards to revitalization, what would be the first th three things you would do in the, in the category of revitalization? Like three, you got the key and you can do what you, what would you do? I think one of the first things, uh, and well, all of these may uh, require a bit of investment on our part, uh, above and beyond what we have already been able to do. Uh, the first is uh, parking in the downtown area. Uh, I would like to uh, explore in a, in a serious way what it would take to add uh, parking uh, to the current municipal lot. It's uh, centrally located, it's available to all of the businesses that are down there. 
And I know that that is an issue that is uh, present every time somebody wants to develop downtown because of the zoning regulations. So whatever we could do as a town to address that, that would be one. Second, I would uh, want to explore what it might mean, uh, even if we had to uh, uh, join with other communities to have uh, a professional development uh, expert uh, who was uh, contracted uh, to help us explore some of the real concrete ways that revitalization might happen and how what the, uh, the uh, grants and so on and so forth might be available to us. I know that uh, BRI has been doing a lot with grants to help us. I would like to explore uh, what it might mean for us and for some other small communities in the area uh, to engage someone whose goal and, and whole life journey was around that. Uh, third, I, uh, is the whole question of how do we use the resources that we already have and the buildings that we already have in this community, how do we uh, leverage those and uh, work with their owners, landlords, uh, to uh, help us embark on a, on a project, the downtown development project that is good for all. Uh, that's uh, and and helps all to whatever extent we can uh, work with those current landowners, property owners, businesses uh, to uh, make it possible for people to invest, uh, to develop those properties where they need developing. Uh, I would be all for it. So those would be three things I would do if I had the keys. So uh, Gene, the, where's the municipal parking lot? Uh, by the town hall. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so- Between the town hall and the bank. Okay, so um, the taxpayers of Bethel owned the town hall where, where we spent millions of dollars to rehab it. Right. It's empty. It's not used. Right. It sits day after day after day and it's a, <laughs> it's a no it's not something to laugh about no i know um so i could come through bethel and that is the keystone to our town i love the mm -hmm. clock i've been all through the building and sadly therese and everyone else sits down and uh at the at that little building at the beginning of rochester or bethel um uh, they can't keep the mud off it they deserve a fit, nice working space. We provided all that. And I have friends that invested and gave money to the town of Bethel to make that building proper. So I would recommend that if you become the select board member that um, we move Therese and Kelly and all the good and Pam into our official town building which we spent millions and millions of dollars on. Uh, we don't need to go to, we don't need to start focusing on other people, people's property to make it look pretty. The town needs a essential point to enter and be properly greeted in, in very nice space. Um, it, it, it's really, it, it really, it saddens me to know how much money we put into that building and it sits every single day. So uh, it's just a suggestion to everyone because I think the, the, the leaders in the town, Therese and all the guys and gals that do what they do, they deserve proper. And, and not only that, our legislative meeting is held in, I don't know who owns the building or wherever. There's not enough space to even sit there to negotiate and converse over serious issues whether it's Dick McCormick and all the representatives, they all gather. We're all sitting on top of each other in this little tiny room. Meanwhile, we have a 
what, three, four million dollar um, reconstruction of our town building, and it sits two seconds away. And by the way, we can't park, you know. So it's it's a suggestion to everyone that's present this evening. Because here's the thing, Bethel is a linear town. It's a narrow town. It's on the edge of a river. So what I would recommend to everyone is that we need a we need a an anchor which is proper and professional to greet people because we don't have a town we don't have a, a a town green we don't have the space for it we're on a river bank so it's just a suggestion to everyone and if you you know if you if you if you're elected for select board I would really seriously um, um, bank on the money that was spent to fix the town hall so that we can all know that's our place to go. Well, it sounds good, Robert. We'll, uh, we'll definitely I'll keep that under advisement. Um, and we'll, we'll search the wagons on why. I know there was a list of reasons why we don't use that as our town office. Um, well, I, heard, I heard that the, uh, the reason why we're not using the town hall offices is because the safe would cost money to move from where the the little yellow building is up to the town hall. Yeah. The, the may, I may I respond, Chris? Well, um, you can. I just want to try to make sure that we keep everything um, to our I, timeline tonight. I, I can be brief. Uh, two things. One, uh, or three things. One, I am well aware uh, that the current select board has uh, looked at uh, their uses of the town hall and has made some decisions uh, related to that. That's not to say we shouldn't revisit that. This, the second thing is that respecting those decisions that have already been made with regard to all of the major properties, building properties uh, that the town owns and administers, uh, the town office, the uh, town garage, and the town hall. Uh, I would like to, well, I would suggest that the select board take a look at all of that and see what the most effective way is to use current properties is so that a there is a healthy warm inviting place for uh, town offices and their and our employees uh, b uh, buildings that are used to their utmost uh, and and that brings me to the third thing uh, i would love to see the town hall uh, used uh, the the big meeting room area used far more than it already is. And that might include things like uh, a reg the uh, summer music program that we have on the, the, uh, by the White Church, uh, that that be continued year round in the town hall, uh, that we uh, sponsor uh, or invite some uh, theatrical groups that are putting together dramas in nearby communities, invite them to put something on in our town hall uh, and to bring people uh, into the town hall on a more regular basis and, on a, and use that facility rather than just letting it sit there empty for most of the time. Those are three things that uh, I would uh, love to see happen. Uh, I can't speak for any of the other select board members, but I know that those are issues that have been before the select board for some time now, and uh, I want to join with them and, uh, and, and help to make sure that we move forward uh, spending the least amount that will get the job done and get it done right. That's um, it. So with regards, is it true, Chris, that uh, one of the issues why Therese and everybody's down at the town clerk's office, is it really the safe 
the cost of the safe to be transported to the town hall? Because if that if that's a cost, I will raise the money and make certain that the safe is moved and placed properly in our town hall. I will do that. I will raise the funds to make certain that happens. If that's the only issue, what what I, I can't imagine any other issue why Therese and everybody's not in their town hall. I can answer a piece of that, Robert, is that um, when your town hall was revitalized, the select board made an, a lease agreement with the historical society. So there was, there's a lease agreement with the historical society. They rent that space. Uh, they pay the town, I think $200 a month. So apparently during, it was talked about to move the town office there. And I believe they had remodeled, done a little bit of a plan to do so. And I don't know what happened to that plan during the construction and the layout of town hall. But to clarify, you don't move a safe. Those safe are concrete blocks. They're actually built you know, into the building. So if they were gonna move your town office, they would have built the safe, uh, the vault while they were remodeling and they didn't do that. And right now you have an ongoing lease with the town, with the historical society, which takes one of the big rooms downstairs. So currently the way that the town hall is set up, you can't move us in there because the way the layout is, it's, there's just not space now. Um, so yeah. that's what I know about it. Certainly Chris may know more than I do. So you're, you're saying that the historical so society has um, more jurisdiction over our town hall than than our taxpayers? No, what I'm saying is that there's a select board prior to this one signed a lease with them. That's all I'm saying. Well, so well, we'll, okay. we'll make sure, Robert, that we, you know, that we look at that. And again, I mean, you know, for anybody that knows, you know, the most recent board that we have here, that, you know, we are more than willing to, you know, circle the wagons and look at things again, um, just like we've been doing with policies and, um, you know, look at different opportunities. And um, and what I'll do Robert, is I'll, I'll talk with some of the committee members that were on the town, hit, uh, town hall committee to find out some of the information of why they chose not to, um, to include the town office inside there. And I'll, I'll get back to you on that, Robert. That sound fair? I think it's very fair, but I think whoever was on that board and and dismissed the um, the design after all the money that was poured in there, and yeah. uh, our people that run our town can't be in the building that the town that other people paid for is absolutely uh -huh. absurd. So I don't know who those people are, but they made a huge mistake. Yeah, yeah, and I know when I got on the board that I I had questions of why why that building wasn't one and the same. And, um, you know, I ran into some of those same hurdles. So I'll, I'll circle up with, I, I know two of the individuals that were on the original um, town hall committee and I will, I will touch base with them and find out and I'll, I'll get you back some information, Robert. And, it, and I'm sure we can add it to our, our meetings here once we get over the hump here and in, um, in uh, March. So. Um, so I just want to now just give uh, Wayne Wayne a little bit of time to talk about himself, why he's running, and okay, out of cons my on yet? Yep, out of consideration for my board members to help them get back on track with the busy agenda that you have tonight, getting through the town budget. I'll just give a quick rundown through those que same questions. Uh, for one, I would reach out to our business entrepreneurs. Um, to come up with ideas to get them to locate into our downtown. For two, I would help them jump through some of the hoops that they need to jump through to get the licenses and stuff that the, and permits that they may need to establish a business in my community. Um, for three, I would uh, work to make um, it known that they were here so that we could use our buy here, stay here tactics and then for the thing with the town hall and stuff I would look at different um what we have for 
options for what we have at hand that we own so that we can revitalize and come up with different uses for things if it's feasible for our town. And then now on to me, I'm just gonna read a little something that I wrote to speed things up here a little bit. Hi, I'm Wayne Townsend. For those of you that know me, know that this is not my first campaign. I ran for the state Senate in 2018 against Senator Richard McCormick. I then ran in 2020 for the House of Representatives against Kurt White. I have always based my campaigns on who I am. I ran each and every campaign myself. I didn't have a team putting together a committee with partisan politics like what we've seen in this race for the select board put into action by state Senator Richard McCormick. And with the partisan support from Representative Kurt White, I don't have a group of people telling me what to say. What I can say is I am real and I have the ability to think with my own mind. I think our state representatives time would be better spent doing the job that they were elected to do and trying to bring something back to our community rather than interfering with a town election. Partisan politics has no place in our town government. I have also recognized my opponent's use of key words targeting of people that may have a difference. In any of my campaigns, I have never used the terms Black Lives Matter or LGBTQ for a reason. I respect people for who they are rather than target people for the color of their skin or their sexual preference. By my not targeting individuals, to me, shows respect for every community member. However, I use the term newcomer, so I will elaborate on that. To me, new faces in our community is a good thing. We want people to be welcome in our community, needed in our community. I always like, look to get acquainted and learn from them. And I also teach them from lifelong experiences here, things that may help them better survive our different seasons. I know that a select board position is not always going to be easy. As a five member board, I also realize I may have to decide the filibuster and I will do this with careful consideration of what's best for the biggest portion of our community by listening to all specs of said article. I also understand the responsibilities of being a select board member. Member, Sometimes things may come up that requires more time than usual. I also know at times we will need to get out in the field to get a better understanding of the issue. Select board members have a tremendous amount of responsibility for the least amount of pay. What a select board position means to me is giving something back to my community to make this a safe, welcoming, friendly place to be for ourselves and our future generations. I am Wayne Townsend and I would appreciate your consideration to elect me to represent you. Thank you. Now you can get back to your agenda. All right, well, thank you, Wayne. I still think the, the best way of doing this whole thing should have been um, the school method that we all talked about where everybody interviews each other and, you know, <laughs> right, Lindley? Um, all right, hi, Doug, welcome. Hi, how y'all doing? Hey, Doug, it's Robert, nice to see you. <laughs> Hey, Robert. Nice <laughs> seeing you guys, too. Hey, Doug. Good to see you. Thank you, Wayne. So we'll just, um, I'll, I'll, you know, meetings are always either behind or whatever. I mean, um, normally at this time, uh, last time I just kind of gave a brief little synopsis of myself. Um, you know, nope, uh, I'm running unopposed this time around. Um, All those in favor, say aye. <laughs> yeah um but you know basically a little bit and you know a little bit about well i think most people know a lot about myself but a little bit about i came on the board you know uh the town of bethel was in a uh critical time in its you know existence where you know we were left with the remnants of irene um we had we had an administration that was kind of lost at that time and um you know we had a lot of budgeting issues and a lot of the non-flashy things um all, you know the behind the scenes things that people don't see so um my expertise uh in what i do every day is you know budgets numbers i'm a big number person i know how to work with budgets balance budgets um you know 
actually get, um, you know, actually get positive things out of our hard earned tax money, uh, make sure it doesn't go to waste. So, um, and, and it's hard because you can't really talk about yourself when you're on a board. Um, as we talked about before, you know, these boards and I, I go around the state um, in my capacity of, at my job and I see, I'm at a lot of boards because I have to sign contracts to boards. And, and um, you know, you, the only way a successful board works is that everybody has to um, come with an open mind um, it, it's wonderful that, you know, just like our board right now, we have members from, you know, all walks of life. Um, but you really, you have to come there with an open mind, put any partisan agenda pieces aside, um, and, and really, you know, what's in the best interest of the taxpayers themselves and citizens of the town. So, and that can be very hard. I mean, I see everywhere I go where there's a five person board and there's two, two people that don't like two other people, you know, and it's, uh, it's really um, damaging. And I will say, and Brady's backing me up here, but um, you know, we've had a really good board and, and um, a lot of the items that we've gotten done here over the last three to five years really wouldn't have got done if we didn't come together. So, um, so I, you know, mostly I just want to thank, you know, the board members that I've been with, um, Majority of them are on tonight. Um, Carl um, also was on, on the board for many years. <laughs> That's all right, I had to yell at my child. <laughs> he, he, him and the cat chasing each other around the house. So, uh, you know, and a lot of the accomplishments that the board has, has done over the last three or four years is really the things that, you, it's not flashy, it's not fun, um, it's not the, you know, what, what nice shop, you know, should we open in the downtown or how can we, you know, a lot of these things are really just the ugly things like a water system that had been neglected for you know, decades, um, you know, uh, budgets that were out of control, deficits, spending, uh, policies that were just ancient, um, that were not doing any good to anybody in the town. So, um, I think some of the nice things now is we finally getting out of that murky, mucky water um, and we're starting to work on some of the new flashy things like uh, what we're working on right now with the, you know, a new highway garage that is well needed. Um, definitely we'll be looking at things about, you know, where does the town office go? Things like what Robert had talked about. Can, can we use the town hall better? Um, can we put our town office in there? So, um, and, you know, even though it doesn't look at, if you look at the downtown businesses, you know, we still have a lot of empty shops that we'd like to see full. But over the last couple of years, we, we finally have ownership down there. We have, you know, we have, you know, Owen and Jesse with Babe's Bar. And we've seen um, the old um, Ruth Clough building um, get purchased and now remodeled. Um, you know, uh, Lindley and her group had purchased the Arnold block. So we're starting to see at least ownership into the buildings. And now they're, you know, they, these things are big dinosaurs, right, Lindley? So they're, you know, they take a lot of investment and time to, to revitalize these buildings. And, you know, at least right now we have pretty good ownership in the downtown. And now, like what Jean was saying, just trying to support these businesses so that they can, you know, get on their feet. 100%. So, um, hey, Chris, too much time. So, Robert, can you hear me? Yep. Well, Wayne Townsend brought something up about getting out in the field and visiting with citizens and taxpayers. And, um, Therese, I think you might, <laughs> we, we all know that there was some major work done on Hooper Hollow Road, which is what's cost a lot of money. And Chris and Therese visited with me. And I have to uh, just say this to everyone present is that when Chris approached me, I knew he was a leader. I knew it in my heart. And Therese is too. And we had our conversation. We didn't get everything we needed done, but we got as much as we could done done. 
Right, Chris? Right, yeah. You did a great job. So did Therese. And so it goes back to Wayne. It's like there are people out in the outer banks of uh, Bethel that need help. And it was so nice that you showed up here that day and spent an hour with me um, just discussing what we accomplished and what we didn't, but we did a, we did a good job. And Doug, Doug was out here last week looking at the road, making sure it was good. <laughs> right, Doug? Looking for a white rabbit. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for a white rabbit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just want to put kudos out to you, Chris and Therese, because I think you guys are doing a great job. Um, and uh, Chris, uh, you were born with leadership in your, uh, in your heart. Well, thank you, Robert. It means a lot to, you know, like we say a lot of times in, you know, in public positions of select board or, you know, school board or things like that, a lot of times you don't, you don't hear a lot of the good things you usually hear when you're not doing so well. So <laughs> it's always nice to, to hear the good things in this position. So, well, you're, de you're very deserving of, uh, of goodness. Well, thank you. And we will, I'm going to next, uh, let me see here. We got uh, the budget to go through. So first, what I'd like to do, um, if you have your books, I can just reference pages as we're going. Um, again, what I you know, said at the beginning, we'll just kind of go through this on a macro level. Um, if, if there is any further discussions on drilling into a, a certain department or a certain um, item just, you know, during the appropriate time, just feel free to raise your hand and we can talk about it. Um, so the first piece is, you know, to go over the revenues of the town. And as we, or most of us understand with any type of budget that a majority of the revenues um, at the town level are done through taxpayer money. Um, but the, the first piece of the revenue is actually what we call the local uh, revenue source which local revenues are things of um, town clerk services, um, class highway money, um, you know, that admin type stuff that we collect from different departments. So um, at, you know, which is only a little over $400,000 of our total revenue a year. So it's a smaller piece of the pie. The, the revenues don't usually change much as it's not this year. Uh, the revenue base is up about $3,500 from last year. Um, so it's pretty much staying the same. There was really no, uh, no major movers um, on that, on that piece. And then moving over to the, moving over to the budget side uh, on the cost, the, um, you know, public works right now, you know, we, we had, um, we had a couple of individuals that had gotten done in their positions in late fall, um, which is always kind of a really tough time to try and hire anybody. Um, so what we have currently is we have two really awesome um, seasonal helpers that are helping us maintain roads. Um, you know, one of them is up in Roberts area. Um, you know, these guys, like, you know, they, they are, uh, they're my boys that work for me during the summertime, but um, you know they're really excellent helpers. Um, the budget currently reflects currently reflects putting our public works department back to full strength, which also means that we have to make sure that we cover things like um, health insurance and um, and things like that. And when we don't know who the candidates are that we might get we have to prepare for the worst. So that means we need to make sure that if we're looking to hire two individuals that both individuals we're gonna assume is gonna get full health care and benefits through us. Um, now that's not always the case. And often, you know, we may hire one that needs a family plan and one that just takes no insurance at all. So, so that the difference that you see in the public works personnel is just adding one, um, one uh, insurance benefits package in it. 
the town owned equipment, as we've talked about, we continue to, we have some aging equipment uh, that needs uh, more service. Um, one thing that Teresa did a really good job of this year was um, starting a, an equipment committee. So the equipment committee is made up of, of citizens of the town that uh, most of them have, you know, an excavation type business or, you know, have some sort of expertise in, you know, what type of equipment is adequate for town roads and when should we be replacing these, um, which, you know, you don't really see the dividends in the short end, but we definitely will see it long term. That's for sure. Um, so we hope that over time that we're going to be able to phase in the new equipment and that right now our repairs and parts and tires and things like that, that those costs will come down over time. But right now we got to get over the hump. Um, so the difference uh, that that increased this year was just an extra 10,000 for the um, <clears throat> for some extra repair costs, as well as um, there's a repeater system up on North Road that <clears throat> that we desperately needed that's uh, gonna be installed. That's uh, That way we keep communications with our trucks. Um, materials, um, you know, we as we saw a couple of years ago, we were at our all time high in this town when it came to salt, sand, um, we also went through a couple of really rough winters too, um, but we, uh, through, through education um, and reaching out to others, you know, we've been able to limit our salt, um, our salt um, purchasing and, and lay down over the last years just by recalibrating um, the equipment. Um, other things, there's certain roads that maybe we use salt before that we don't use now, or maybe there were some processes of you know, uh, cutting snow using salt that we may not do now. Um, so we've been using a lot more sand and less salt. Um, sand is much cheaper than salt, as we all know. So we've continued to see the savings on that. And then the, unfortunately we had, we had the spring flood event of 2019 um, for everybody that lived in, you know, mostly Lilliesville, um, Christian Hill, um, Sanders Road um, and, and those pieces, Gilead, you know, they knew that there was quite a bit of damage that happened to our roads and bridges. It was right now, by the time we're all said and done, it was over, it's over a million dollars worth of uh, work that ha either has been done or is in the process of being done. Um, but we are on the hook for 12 and a half percent of that. So uh, what the board has been doing last year, as well as this year, is we've been paying that debt off. So rather than just take a loan and stretch it out over, you know, 10 years or 20 years, uh, we've been paying that debt off. So last year we paid off about 118,000, I believe was the number, Therese. And then, and then the piece that we finished up doing this year was about $43,000 worth of work. So that's all been budgeted. Um, and we have one last piece, which is the Pinella Bridge, which we're working on that. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll have one more year and then we should have our ERAF paid. Yeah, and that'll be the for both the permanent and the temporary um, for Pinello. And so that has mm -hmm. the RFP has been drafted, but sent to um, FEMA for to go through mitigation because I'm not sure they're going to agree with our, you know, less expensive route. So um, we're sending it to mitigation to get feedback and then hopefully in a perfect world, we'll wrap that up this year. So then, yeah, then that'll take care of it because this is the portion just on the P-Vine piece alone. Right. Hey, the Chris. It's Robert. Um, I've been wondering why since uh, Irene, it's an expensive cost, but I think every town in, in Vermont should have, like Therese should have control of a satellite phone. Okay, so when the grid goes down, um, Therese can make calls out to people. It's an expense, but it's a very important thing because what happened in Texas this past week, they cannot communicate. So since Irene, I requested, uh, well, I suggested this to Rochester to get someone, the select board member, the state rep, someone to have a satellite phone. It won't be used every day, 
but when disaster happens, you can be in touch with Dave on the truck. You can be in touch with the select board. You can communicate. And I'm just waiting for the next disaster, like down in Lilliesville that you just mentioned, Chris. Um, without a satellite phone, you're cooked. Because, so I don't know what, I, I don't know what it costs per month to own a satellite phone, but I would rather see more money proposed for a satellite phone in the town of Rochester controlled by Therese or Kelly or somebody or Pam, rather than uh, everyone paying 82% of their tax rate for the school system, <laughs> you know. We actually don't have a satellite phone, but we do myself and the fire chief have through emergency management, what are called GETS cards, G-E-T-S cards. And what happens is that would give both of us access to phone service. So even if the grid is down or like you had an Irene, uh, there's a number that we can call and we can um, in an emergency situation get access to the grid. So, and we only pay for it if we need it. So luckily the good news is in Bethel, we now have two mm -hmm. new satellites, um, one at the town garage and one up on Deering. So our cell service is good, but if something happened, uh, we do have gets cards, uh, Robert. So I, we do have options for in an emergency. And, and it's also something that, you know, every year we, we go through and update our emergency management plan. So. It's definitely something that the board um, and Therese and, and the fire chief can, um, you know, look at, talk about, and see if that's, you know, something that we need further than what we currently have. But um, the um, fire department really didn't change much. Um, the last couple of years, we've had some pretty large grants that we've done uh, with the fire department. Um, we did all the apparatuses last year. <clears throat> this year, um, we, we don't need to, so the budget's pretty flat on that one. Constable, the only thing um, really that changed there is that, as we talked last time, is we're updating the two flash and speed signs. Um, the signs that we had purchased, I want to say around five years ago, were done so with a grant, but they were also kind of the systems that run on batteries. Um, they're not really a long-term uh, speed sign uh, where the ones that we're proposing here would have solar capabilities. So we'll be able to, um, going forward, they'll be able to charge themselves rather than have to constantly take the batteries out and charge them. And well, they say they last longer. Well, we'll wait and see, but um, that's I think they're more affordable, but other than that, <laughs> one of them has now had what we're coining a catastrophic failure. So we can't, <laughs> I don't want to spend 700 on a motherboard for one. So yeah, yeah they're cheaper now. They were six grand a piece before, so now they're a little more affordable. So I think you're right, Chris. I'm not sure they do, last do the new long. ones. Do the new ones uh, give us the output? Um, the, the other ones used to give us a report if we requested it. Mm -hmm. um, worked it out through through whatever to get a report on um, speed over cost of time. Uh, do the new ones do that too, or do we know? Actually, I can't remember. I'd have to look at the literature. I can't tell you off the top of my head because we looked at several models. And um, so I, I'll make a note to find out, Paul, and email you, but- Yeah, I we used to be able to download a report that showed um, average speeds and whatnot yeah. over cost of time. I I can't tell you off the top of my head. So I'll look and then email you. Thank you. Yeah. I believe I believe just about all those models, Paul, they allow you to pull the data from them. The only difference is, is the method in which you can pull the data. So it, it, it may either be um, you have to go physically to the box to pull the data. They do have some that do have like a, like a Bluetooth type system where you can pull the data remotely, but. Uh, rec department's uh, pretty flat, uh, no changes there. Uh, parks and public places, uh, the big change there was that, um, as we talked about, that the stone wall in front of the municipal parking lot is, um, is due for maintenance. 
So we have um, set aside $10,000 in there to at least start some of the maintenance on that wall um, this year. Um, so that's the increase um, on that piece. The municipal office is virtually the same. Um, not, not much of a difference there. The same with town halls. And as we talked about before, Paul didn't want to increase the select board rates. So wait a minute, wait a minute. It's not too late. <laughs> Do a right in. Yeah. Yeah. All the comp time that you could ever want. Um, the lister budget's still the same. However, we did put in $10,000 worth of assessor services um, just because we do currently expect, well, the likelihood is we are gonna have one less lister. So there may be the opportunity where we may have to use some third party lister services. Um, so we have budgeted for that if that does happen. We also budgeted for that at the, at the budget that we're currently in that we haven't had to use that yet. Um, Government operations is down. Um, a piece of that is legal. We, um, as we discussed last time, we had legal is a tough one to budget for because uh, most years you may only use a thousand or two thousand dollars of legal just you know for looking at contracts or looking at agreements. Um, but every once in a while, we had three or four years ago, you know, we had some water water litigation. And um, and uh, what was that? A storm. Uh, we we had two different litigations that was like forty or fifty thousand um, dollars. So at that time, the board decided to start putting more money into it. Um, and then the last couple of years, we you know kind of ratcheted it down a little bit. Um, we're still higher than where we were before, but um, uh, we kind of looked at that. So we chopped ten thousand out of that this year. The um, the other big movers here was um, the reappraisal. The you know the town of Bethel is going to have to do a reappraisal, and we are you know anywhere between one and three years away from that. Um, that that usually comes to fund the reappraisal. Usually comes in two forms. The first form is is the the part that comes from the state. So we get money from the state. Um, that we tuck aside into a reappraisal fund. And the second piece is, is the match to that, which is our money. Um, the reappraisal that we estimate is probably going to be somewhere around $300,000 to have it done. And we currently have 165, eight. So, so we're starting to, um, uh, we, we started this reappraisal fund last year. Um, you know, this is, Again, like I talked about before, you know, there, there are definitely policies and procedures that we have, you know, updated and changed and funds and things that we should have had years ago where every year we put a little piece of our budget aside for the next reappraisal. Um, so we, we, we have, yeah, we have, uh, was that last year that we vote, was it last year or the year before that we voted right. to you all had you had a reappraisal fund, but we changed, but we had to re-vote it to add. You were only putting Act 60 money in it, and then we were voting to put appropriations. I think we've done it two years now. last year. Well, because we had to vote at town meeting to allow the capital fund wording to change, and I mm -hmm. I can't remember if that was last year or the year before, frankly. The loss, but yeah, I think it's yeah. a year before. Year before. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So yeah, so we have 165,000 in it, not including obviously this 20. So we're getting there. We're going to yep. work our way to saving for it. And, and it's definitely something, I mean, the, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't even think we had a single fund in this town up until maybe five or six years ago. Um, you know, we just, we funded for things when it happened. So that's why, you know, a, a nice, a nice budget is usually a nice bell curve. So we're just, um, and you know, our town for so long was, you know, we were spikes and valleys and spikes and valleys and, and none of these funds. So we have several of these funds and I know they weren't, um, they weren't as the townspeople weren't as receptive to the funds early on because they thought they would be like slush funds and worried about, 
you know, just money that's tucked aside, that's mismanaged. But, you know, these funds, you know, like the cruiser, we have, we have a bunch of them, capital improvement funds, equipment funds, and, and, and this allows for long-term budgeting without major uh, changes to the tax rates. So, um, and, and this is just another one that, you know, had we been putting this money aside, I think the average reappraisal is what, 12 years or so? So, Probably a little less, but so had we been doing this over a larger period of time, we had to have you know put less in it every year to budget. So we're just trying to do catch up. Um, Same questions, Robert. Yes. Um, there's a there's a huge elephant in the room, and no one has uh, reflected on it. It's called education. And what I want to put forth to everyone visiting us tonight, 82% 82, 82 of property taxes go to the supervisory union and school taxes. That needs to be cut by 40%. I cannot imagine that 82% of property taxes that I will, will, we all pay, goes to education. Are, you've got to be kidding. Well, that's definitely something that you probably should and, um, you know, talk to your local representatives. We have. Um, I'm talking to them now. <laughs> Robert, well, we, we Robert, don't control the education. Robert, people. Robert. There's an open seat available on the Bethel board this year, and there's no write-in candidate. Why don't, you, <laughs> why don't you go for it? Hey, Dave, maybe I will, but <laughs> we, we can't afford 82% of our property taxes. And then I, think that's a, I think that's a discussion for a school board meeting. Yeah, unfortunately, we, unfortunately with us, we don't have any, any control over the school's budget, um, regardless of how, you know, how it looks. Um, but, but but wait a second. So 82% of the taxpayers of Bethel goes to the supervisory union and the school system. And you're you're saying that we we have no control over that? We're saying he's saying the select board has no control over that. You as a voter have total control over that. He's saying the select board doesn't have control. But how about a taxpayer? The same, just you've got to vote it at the polls. I mean, that's yeah. uh, this year's Australian ballot, which I'm sure you're aware of. Well, I think what Chris was saying, Jean, uh, Robert, is that the select board has no control over the school budget right. um, or that. Well, I, I'm very, very, very apparent. I know about that. And the select board cannot inter, inter, intrude into the school and the supervisor union but it is a burden on everyone. I think the, the next one, Robert, um, they have one more informational meeting, which I believe is on the 1st of March to go through their budget. I, I, I agree. I think there is a very large burden. Um, I mean, well, I, ed education of children is very important, but the way we spend it is another. And, um, but as far as like where, where it is for this board here, I mean, the select board has no control and, it, and the town has even less control because we have to write the check when they tell us to write the check. So it's just- uh, Yeah, but why, why do you keep reappraising property taxes to support the supervisory union for the non-education of the children? 82% of property taxes are for education. Mm -hmm. And you don't- Therese, you, no one has control over all that money flowing through up to the state? No, actually, no. Yeah. The only, um, so we reappraise properties, um, not for necessarily for school tax. I mean, that's obviously a side effect, but we certainly do it for us because we need to make sure that as people issue zoning permits and things, the grand list. To build new houses, obviously, we do reappraisal to build the grand list. Um, but no, actually, state statute says that 
when we in Bethel, we collect four times a year, as you know, and we have to pay the school within 15 days of the due date, the percentage of the tax that we've collected. So if we've collected, you know, 90%, we have to pay the school 90%. Then we do that for all four periods. And then at June 30th, we have to pay the school whatever we owe them, regardless of the fact that we haven't collected it. So like with delinquent taxes, that entire burden falls to the town. So we have to give the school their money by statute by June 30, um, even if we haven't collected it. So that's you know above our pay grade in the legislature, as, as you know. Um, but so when we reappraise property, Robert, it's also to help spread you know, the tax rate properly throughout Bethel for, for the municipal tax, which is obviously a way, you know, much less to a smaller portion of what your school tax is. But that's one of the reasons we don't keep up the grand list necessarily to support the school. We do it to support our own tax rate. Does that answer your question, Robert? Well, it really doesn't because uh, Chris mentioned the cross between sand and salt we're as a town we're looking at the cost of sand sand and salt and we've got 82 percent of the of our tax property taxes going to the school system so why why can it not be 40 percent less so that chris can say hey alan go buy as much salt as you want yeah well i mean Robert, you need you need to speak to uh, your rep, your local and federal representatives, because a lot, I'm, I'm not going to talk anymore about this one thing. A lot of those expenses are federal and state mandates, unfunded mandates, which the school board, the select board, and you have no control over. Without well, who, who, well, if, I don't, if, if, if I don't have control, you don't have control, Dave. Chris doesn't have control. And we're all trying to survive here. Who has control? I just I told think you what they were saying. There, there's six people you need to talk to. Yeah, a, it's you know they, again. It's um, you know I don't want to get too far off the um, the agenda here, but you know that that's really it's it you know that's that's why it's very important on on who you vote for representation to Montpelier. Um, and if that's on a Senator end or, or house of representative end or your governor, I mean, those, those are the people that we have control over as, as taxpayers and voters. But once, once the, the laws are made and the mandates are handed down, uh, you know, like Dave was saying at the select board level or, or at the school board level, a majority of it, we're handicapped. We, we can't do anything. So it's an unfortunate situation. I completely understand where you're coming from, Robert, but it's definitely not a discussion, nothing that we're going to be able to solve here, here with this board. Um, uh, we, we do have um, Representative uh, Kurt White that will be stopping in or has been stopping in on our board monthly, Therese, that sound right? Yeah, the last meeting of the month. So I, I believe, is he going to be at the next meeting? No, I put him to the end of March because okay. I knew would go long. So he's going to come to the last meeting in March, the second. So we, one thing we've started to do, Robert, is have our, our newly appointed, newly elected representative who actually lives in Bethel to attend our meetings on a monthly basis to give us uh, feedback from Montpelier, what might be coming down. At the same time, allows us to give a little feedback to him um, so it may be a discussion um, to have at that time, but I just don't think it's anything we're going to be well, able to can I Can I interrupt? Why is Kurt White not here and present this evening to discuss these matters before the town hall, the town meeting? Where's Kurt? Where is this guy? He was at our last budget informational last week on the 15th. He normally comes to the second meeting of the month. But um, I actually asked him if we could push him off to, to, because he was already here for our first budget informational, the one that was advertised in town report. And so because I knew it took us two hours to get through this portion of our meeting on the 15th, that we, would, um, we wanted to move him to the, you know, the third. But he definitely has a, a website, a phone number, and all that. You can contact him through the legislation. If you want, I can email you his contact information. Um, 
but he was here last Monday. So um, that's so why. So if, if I were the new, newly elected select board member or the uh, state representative, I think I would be present during this meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. So here we go again. Well, I, you know, I, again, I, you know, I, I appreciate all your feedback, Robert, and, and um, I want to make sure we stay on target here. And um, so I want to get back to the budget. Um, the only other thing in government operations that changed is we, um, we decreased the amount that we're going to appropriate into the capital improvement fund. And you'll see that uh, two pages from now that um, that we've decreased the amount that we're going to put in the capital improvement fund, but we've increased the amount that we would pay out in the form of a loan payment for the um, potential of the new town garage um, that we're in the process of. So we want to make sure we had the money available. So if everything goes through, we can start that. Um, the, um, uh, the, the Bethel Library um, had a request in there to replace some of their computers because they're outdated. Um, so we are fulfilling that need as well as the fall festival in Bethel um, had requested some extra funding uh, for them that we had put into this budget. Um, I won't go through the human services portion because that's a couple of um, items down here and then Paul can talk to any of those. Um, same with the White River Valley Ambulance, so I'll skip those. But the overall, <clears throat> uh, overall, um, the costs are up, uh, if I round it to the nearest hundred, um, costs are up 19500 um, over last year. Uh, sorry, 19500 Revenues are up 3500 So the net, the net increase to the taxpayers is $16,000. Um, Normally, when we're talking about what, you know, what does that mean for myself at my home paying taxes, normally, based on our grand list, about every $19,400 is one penny on the tax rate. So when we put this budget together, we did so um, uh, knowing that we were still doing forward thinking, um, we we're still going to get projects done um, but also keeping some budget concerns in mind uh, for the overall um, citizen on taxes. Um, so we were looking that we were going to increase by one cent. Um, after we had already put this budget together, um, just the way that goes, the grand list gets kind of updated. And based upon the grand list updating, uh, which the grand list updated itself by about $34,000 this year, which is actually a pretty significant change year over year, that the one cent uh, that we had anticipated as an increase for the budget actually is going to be about a one cent decrease. Um, so that's how powerful the grand list can be. Um, and that's why it's very critical to make sure we have listers and um, and those people. So, so when we board members in mind, we had it to be a one, one cent increase. And after the grand list where we, where the listers anticipate the grand list to be, um, it's going to be about a penny savings at the municipal level. Um, to stay on track with, um, so that's kind of the overall budget. Um, the next piece that um, uh, article 11 talks about is, is the um, human services piece, um, which uh, Paul Valley um, heads up that committee, which is, is normally the services in and around Bethel that, um, that we appropriate money to each year, um, that they go towards helping out our citizens on a daily basis, if that's transportation or, or you know, other, other means in and around. Um, Paul, did you want to just talk through that for a moment or two? Yeah, um, I'd like to, I, once again, thanks the committee, uh, Sandy Farrell and St. Capron and our benevolent leader, Carol Ketchum, 
Um, it's been routine over the years that the town of Bethel would support nonprofit organizations that have significant impact on Bethel residents. And so each year we ask them to submit to us requests uh, for what they feel they would like to see come from the town. We ask them for financial uh, information and we also ask them to specify to us exactly what, how many Bethel residents or what impact they directly have on Bethel residents. And uh, we go through a review process. We get together and I think there are 17 or so that uh, pretty much routinely ask us for support. And the town has made a significant uh, impact in some of these uh, nonprofits. And this year, I think we're up, uh, uh, is it three or 5%? I think uh, we also take a look at uh, <clears throat> how it impacts the budget, but we also know that we need to support a lot of these local nonprofits that uh, really have a, a direct impact on the residents of, um, of Bethel. So if there are any questions, uh, I'd be more than happy to answer the, uh, answer them well it's a three percent increase paul which has been yeah. looking back through has been about the average growth the average of yeah. human services over the yep. years so. uh, this year we did decide uh, there was one new addition the art bus um, had been supported in years past uh, but had over the past several years not um, submitted application for support and this year they came back, they have new leadership. And so we opted to support them a little, uh, but we also uh, opted to support more towards the visiting nurse uh, um, organization because, you know, certainly because of COVID, a lot of those organizations have seen um, more stress than what they had seen in the past. Um, so we opted to increase some of the support for for a couple of those different organizations. All right, and I think that the biggest change that we're gonna see on the human services end of things, um, as we discussed prior, um, going through the Australian ballot this year is it's, a, it's an all or nothing. Um, in years past, there, there was the opportunity for either a you know, a citizen of the town or an individual representing uh, one of these services to um, to propose a, a change at town meeting day, um, a re, you know, revise a number, uh, but that won't be the case this year. So it's, um, you know, will be, the appropriations will be $17,250 and it'll be exactly the way it's laid out there um, with the individual services. So there won't be any opportunities for any changes this year. Um, the next one is the White River Valley Ambulance. Uh, again, we vote that line item separately. That, um, that budget really hasn't changed year over year once again. Um, and as we discussed last time, that, that budget's a little tricky because they give us their budget on a yearly calendar cycle where our budget, you know, we start um, July 1st and go through June 30th. So Sometimes even if they give us an increase, we may or may not see that increase all inside that budget season. So um, there's a little finagling with that budget to make it work. Um, and then Therese did a good job this year. Of, in years past, we just kind of always arbitrarily used the 15th of the quarter as the tax day, which as we found in the past, that might land on Sunday or, or you know, or Saturday or something like that, or a holiday or, so we, um, so Therese made a couple of adjustments on that. So two of the installments will be on the 16th. You have August 16th, November 15th, February 15th and May 16th. So, and then the last article to be uh, voted on was uh, kind of goes with the installments of the payment. Um, it's a separate item, but, um, for ease, well, for ease to the taxpayers as well as our very complicated, old, antiquated 
dinosaur software that we use at the office um, that we've asked uh, to allow for a three-day grace period to, you know, to establish these payments of taxes. Yeah. Um, you know, in the past, it's if the 15th was on a Sunday and you didn't have it here by Sunday, then Monday you got hit with penalties and interest. Um, it's really more of a, I mean, it's not antiquated software. We obviously keep the updates, but it's just easier to, it. it's also difficult, you know, when you have somebody mailing it in and then, you know, you're opening their mail that day and they're not late, but you know, the person who walked in the door um, is late because he forgot you're charging one 8% penalty and 1% interest, but you're not charging the other person anything. So we'll see if it works. If it doesn't, we'll deal with it next year. We're just, we're hoping this kind of gives a little bit of a buffer. Um, so we'll see how it works out, I guess, um, and see what happens. But, you know, in a perfect world, you didn't, you wouldn't accept postmarks. So they were due when they were due. And that was the end of it. But because you've accepted postmarks for a long time in Bethel, I think that would be a hard, you know, harder pill to swallow. So we'll see how this goes this year. And, um, you know, it's hard too, because unfortunately, we budget a revenue of interest and penalty. So uh, so we'll see what it looks like and just reevaluate it at the end of the year. And we're, and we're really trying to help out, you know, the, we are. the, you know, the taxpayer that is, you know, yeah. does their best to get their taxes in on time. And I, I think we've seen in the past that the ones that we collect penalties and interest on a far majority of the time are ones that even if we set a 10 day grace period, they'd still miss it. So it's not, you know, these are more kind of just a small formality of helping out, you know, taxes due on Saturday. Oh, I forgot on Friday. Oh, here it's Monday, you know, and yeah. rather than hit somebody with, what is it? 9%? Oh. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it rather does. than hit 9%, which 9% of your tax payment is, you know, that's a big chunk of change, you know, it is uh, it, a half a grocery bill or, you know, yeah. the uh, other thing is too, as you think about it, somebody had a baby. I've experienced that. I've had someone have a lose a loved one and you're mm -hmm. sitting there going, well, I need 9%. So hopefully this, this will help, you know, that, and we'll, we'll see, we'll do it for a year and we'll see how it goes. Well, you don't even know if it passes. So I guess we won't, if it, if it passes, we'll try it for a year and see if it doesn't pass, we know the answer. So we'll go mm. from there. Um, just before we get off of the informational hearing piece, Therese, could you, um, could you just go over two things for me? One would be the, um, and we talked about it a little bit, but the process of write-ins and even though you're a write-in candidate, you get to at least have a certain percentage of the list um, on that piece. And what was the other one here I had? Um, and when, when do you have, or has that already came and gone the um, time to request a Absentee ballot. Absentee ballot. So write-ins are, if you are not on, if you did not fill out your consent of candidate form, so you're not on the ballot, some people will launch, like we know, let's use Louise. Louise is doing a write-in campaign. So Louise needs to get 30 votes or 1% of Bethel's checklist, whichever is less. Currently, based on the checklist, List right now she'd need I think about 16 votes obviously the checklist changes because Vermont um, authorized or approved same day voter registration so that may play but probably not enough to really change exactly what she needs so if she gets 16 votes and nobody else gets you know 16 or more votes then Louise is in if Louise got 16 votes and Chris Jarvis got 18 votes you know, Chris would be the winner. However, he may say, no, I got wrote in by accident and he concedes or whatever, but that's the way it works. Um, if no one runs, we have one seat that we know currently no, we have a couple of seats we know no one's running for, right? Trustee of public funds at this point, I'm not aware of anybody running a write-in yeah. campaign. I'm not aware of anybody writing a campaign, a write-in campaign for the other lister. So at that point, what happens is if there's no write-in campaign winner, then the select board will put out a notice that you're looking for a lister, trustee of public funds, whatever, and so people will submit their letter of interest, and then the select board will interview them, and then they will appoint. 
So right. that's the way that process works. Um, as far as a ballot um, goes, people have to keep in mind that that about requesting a ballot is if you request a ballot, you know, on Monday, um, you're probably going to have to stop and pick it up and you're going to have to return it because the mail is not going to work out for you. So I think that's something that people need to keep in mind is when you know, what the date is that, you know, think about the mail, you know, are you asking Pam to mail you a ballot? Well, obviously, if she mails you a ballot on Monday, you're not going to get it. So but you can stop and pick one up on Friday. And I think that you can stop and pick one up um, on Monday as well. Um, and then um, when you if you get the ballot, and you have it, um, if it's mailed, the post office is excellent. Pam talked to the postmaster, postmistress, and she said that any ballot, if it comes and it shows up with postage due, she doesn't care. She makes sure that Pam gets the ballot and then she'll just send Pam a note at the end, the OS 28 cents or whatever. Right now we know that the mail, when people mail it back, it's just a regular stamp. Um, so anything that she gets in the mail um, she actually is very kind and takes it right over to the polls. I was working on the last election and someone dropped their ballots off at the town office before I left for the day. So it was around five, five thirty, um, And I picked them up and then I hand delivered them to the fire station. So if you have a ballot, drop it off at the town clerk's office on Monday or take it to the polls on Tuesday, but just be cautious about mailing it back. If you mail it back on Monday, depending where you mail it from, you know, there's a chance Pam is not going to get it in time and um, mm. it'll just come in late and it'll be a spoiled ballot. So right. it's, that's, you know, just to be, people need to be thinking about that. Perfect. And still is voting in person. People can go to the high school, to the gymnasium and vote from eight in the morning until seven at night. Uh, wear a mask. Uh, Pam will have masks there. There's going to be hand sanitizer. People will be socially distanced. The ballot bo booths will be set up that way. So people <clears throat> still can, and most likely, I expect quite a few will come and vote in person. So that's right. all possible. There's an exit. Pam has the whole thing laid out. Mm -hmm. So those are your options for voting. Yeah. And, and during the presidential election, it worked out really well for any, any of those who came and did it in person. You know, it was, uh, you know, it was kind of a one-way traffic um, scenario. So, you know, you were going in one door and out the other door. Um, so it was, it was uh, pretty safe and able to, you know, distance and, and, and everything like that. Yeah, so. and it's my understanding Pam plans on doing that as well. One way in and one way out. Mm -hmm. yep. So, um, yeah. So if you need to, if you forget your ballot at home, uh, you're going to have to fill out an affidavit at the polls saying you lost your ballot and you have to fill that out. Um, so there is some paperwork there, but if people want to vote that are not yet registered to vote, they can also be registered to vote and vote same day in Vermont. So um, pretty much whatever the situation is, I think she can take care of you. So. so unless I hear any questions in regards to the informational hearing, which covers the budget and all the articles, um, if you do have any questions after the meeting or something comes up, feel free you know, reach out to any of the select board members or Therese, um, you know, we're more than willing to, you know, provide you with information or reasoning for, for an item or um, any of that type of stuff. So um, what I would like to do is get a motion to adjourn the budget informational hearing, and then we can um, call to order our regularly scheduled select board meeting. No move. Second. Move, David, and Paul second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, ayes. And then I will call the meeting to order for the select board meeting at 740. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. The agenda right now is just one. One piece on the agenda, um, as well as the town, uh, you know, as well as um, town manager's report and communications and meeting minutes. So, 
Does anybody have anything that they want to add to the regularly scheduled select board meeting or is it good to approve as written? Move to approve as written. Second. Hey, Lindley approved it. Mo, I read his lips, he seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 We gotta get Mo in here. This is Mo's last board meeting. So we'll, we'll get you into the, the log as much as possible, Mo. <laughs> no. We did have, um, you know, before we open it up, I, there was an individual earlier had asked, um, uh, they had a question is why, why, um, why Mo was stepping down um, and then thanking you for your service over the years. Um, I'm sure you're stepping down just because of the pay. Um, <laughs> um, I responded directly. It was Owen and I was okay. I, I saw it in there somewhere and I was looking and I, I, I don't know. It wouldn't blank on me, but I just said Mo served at two different times. I think once in the eighties, right, Mo, and once more recently for a total of eleven years. And I said you were tired, Mo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You served on the Constitution Commission and the Trans, you know, BRTS board. And I said you were you were just tired. <laughs> and and I think you know on you know not speaking for Mo, but oh. Uh, you know, select board, being on the select board is, I mean, obviously there's the meetings, right? But there, there's, you know, typically a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you have to, you know, deal with either on a daily basis or, you know, um, you know, we often are on other committees or boards. Um, and, you know, and Mo, Mo and also include Judy in that. I mean, they, they really have been going above and beyond the call of duty here the past year, especially he's at the transfer station um you know they they both were on the board at the transfer station which takes time there you know there's been the transitioning at the transfer station there um one of the employees or the manager was out for a little bit of time um uh recuperating and uh you know mo and judy and others pam was down there as well um you know really took the bull by the horns and spent a lot of time down there um so and I would say if, you know, if I was a young buck like Mo and I was spending that much time that I would be kind of burnt out by now. So, um, <laughs> so, um, you know, we definitely think, you know, everything that you have done, you and Judy, especially, and, um, you know, welcome you back at any time, but, um, you know, it, you know, these boards really, and I, I can't remember who it was, maybe it was Carl had told me, uh, yeah, it might have been Carl when he was getting done. You know, I mean, we all come and we do our public service duties, but, you know, we're not really meant to be on these boards or in these committees forever. And, you know, we're here, uh, we, you know, serve our time, whatever that might be. And, and then when the right time is, you, you know, you vacate it and let somebody else in. And that's kind of what Mo's, Mo's doing for everybody right now is allowing others to have a, an opportunity. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Mo's, you know, he's been great. I mean, I, I've been here three years and he interviewed me and he still hired me. And then he, uh, and he's been great. You know, if you need something, Mo knows the history. I know if I call him or email him or whatever, mm -hmm. he'll know something about, you know, why the history of an item was or what is it I, you know, don't know, or, or he knows all the roads and he oversaw a project for us, uh, you know, Camp Brook after FEMA um because right. chris obviously had a conflict and of course mo being mo makes friends with everybody so i go up there one day to ask a question because mo was somewhere and uh they, well they're like well where's mo you know like i'm sorry i was second fiddle but but because chris couldn't go up and deal with the, the <laughs> paving for pike obviously uh so it was quite funny so mo's been great a good sounding board um always a voice of reason and common sense, which, common sense, which is a wonderful thing, and and we would be remiss if we didn't comment about what a great sense of humor he has. So I'm thankful for Mo. He's always been supportive of me and has continued support, and it means a lot to me. And uh, I'm sure he's still going to call me or email me occasionally. <laughs> uh, it's going to be great to have him as a, a new lister. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, only oh, no, need 16 votes, Mo. That's right. No. 
it's been uh, enjoyable working with all you folks. So, uh, in, and uh, Therese is the uh, fifth town manager that I've worked with. So, wow. and in my wow. opinion, she's the best. Oh, that's sweet <laughs> wow. of you to say. Yep. Thank yep. you. And, uh, but yeah, it's, you know, I, I think it's, you know, the end of a big yeah. error, especially, I mean, that's a long time, 11 years, even though you didn't do it all in one time. It's a lot of, it's a lot of meetings. It's a lot of, you know, taking the time when, you know, one of the many great things about Mo is he asks and he talks to people about how it's going to affect them or what do they think about something. And I mean, he weighs that and, you know, his opinion and, um, into consideration before he makes a decision. And that was, is one of the many things that make him an, a good select board member. So I think everybody thanks you for your service, Mo. Right in Thank for you. Mo. Yeah, right in for in Mo. No I way. <laughs> he knows where you live, Paul. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't forget, Paul, there's a school director position open too. Uh, <laughs> <I'm doing laughs> now. <laughs> Yeah. Oh boy. So yeah, thank you again, Mo. I mean, we'll definitely miss you. And you. came on, came on uh, one day after I did. Um, yep. He took over. I can't. Was it Bill's spot? Bill. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So yep. one one meeting. So yeah, Mo and I were locked in locked in battle for that spot. <laughs> <laughs> he was selected. Uh, I just want to say, just you know, I'm not, I'm not from here. I've only been here 30 years and whatever, but um, I've always come to respect the people that I call Vermont treasures, and those are the folks that have been here, you know, from birth or, and and really have a good perspective on common sense, and have grown up and gone through the, all these processes that have changed over the years. And they're still there and they're still giving us the guidance and uh, they they deserve all the respect uh, that we can give them and thank you mo all right plus i need to know about pie <laughs> Finley, do you want to update us on pie? We know pie. We need a pie update. Sure. This pandemic is clearly getting to everyone. If what becomes most important is pie, um, so just I'll do the full spiel so that those that aren't aware of it get to learn a little bit more. So the Bethel Revitalization Initiative is sponsoring pie uh, in light of the fact that we cannot do our normal social gathering before town meeting and the gathering of town meeting. Um, we still wanted to do something. So we're gonna be hosting uh, an untown meeting, which will be a virtual event uh, where town committees and other town groups are not just town affiliated committees, but um, community oriented groups will have a chance to say a few words about what they've been working on in the last year and what initiatives they're having coming up for the coming year or so. and you know, kind of a way for people to get a little bit of an update and also maybe find out about ways to get involved in different things or what they might be interested in going on in Bethel that they didn't know about. There'll also be a little bit of um, sort of connecting with other neighbors. There will be breakout rooms where you kind of get to meet other people that maybe you haven't met or maybe folks you haven't seen all year because you're cooped up in your house. And um, to try to keep the tradition of pie going, we have asked a local baker who's trying to open a bakery in downtown Bethel, hopefully this summer, uh, to make the pies for us. So there'll be individual servings all uh, pre-packaged, ready to go. So it's very COVID safe. She is uh, in food service, so she very much understands how to do this safely and effectively. And there'll be, as you exit from voting, there'll be a table with pie Take your pie, sign into town meeting in the evening, eat your pie before town meeting or at untown meeting, whichever happens. Most people will probably eat it beforehand, but um, yeah, there'll be a few flavors of pie. I don't know what yet, but I think it'll be good. Good. So just to clarify, you will have already had to have signed up, right? Through the sign up at the bu-vt.org. So the pie will have your name on it. You don't have to sign up for pie. We're just... Okay sponsoring pie because we feel that's important. Okay. Hi. 
Okay. Um, but we would love for people to come to Untown meeting and you do have to register to come to that. It's a Zoom uh, link and it is, I think it's the back page of the town. Yep, list. I'm just looking at it now. So it's from five to 6.30 on March 2nd. Yep, and you can, um, so you can register and then it'll be open to anybody who registers and you can register right up till the event or even during it and join in at any time. Okay. But we won't make it exclusive on the pie. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't sure. I just wanted to make sure. So people, um, yeah, it sounds like it's, yeah. So there is an ad, it's on page 72, um, along with Bethel University, so. And, and Therese, as long as the select board members are not actively participating, can we all be associated with the event at the same time or how does that work with open meeting? Uh, absolutely, you can, you're still residents, you're still voting members. So you're not gonna be making a decision about anything. Um, well, we might be working at the polls at that time too, depending on who's on that particular shift. Right, depending how, yeah, if, if um, Pam has already uh, tied you up. Yeah, and if not, yes, select board members have the right to participate yeah. and as residents, because you're not making decisions and, um, you know, as a okay. person, so. Good to know. Well, I know just, you know, in history, we we often try to avoid, you know, yes. being together in a group, you know, because of the perceived, you know, uh, ness of the whole thing, but. Um, Absolutely, a lot of it is about perception. So yes, right. but in this okay. case, yeah, you can certainly attend and you're obviously not gonna be making any decisions and you don't represent the board when you're there. You represent, you know, you as a person. And just to follow up what Paul was saying, we did try to make it early enough so that um, members of the BCA could still get to counting votes in time and not, you know, so you could join and then still get to the vote count if you're not actually working the polls during that time. Well, maybe there's a way, I don't know, maybe I'm just thinking too much into this, but maybe there's a way there could be an active session at the fire station you know, uh, a login at the fire station where, you know, either the poll workers or voters as they come in during that time can. Yeah, I agree. What's going on or something. Well, that's a good idea. And just for clarification, you're not voting at the fire station this time. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. At, at the school. I want yeah. someone to well, show up at the fire station, but well, maybe. Also, if there's any leftover pie. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be for the vote counters um, can, they can, can take care of that so we'll, we'll take it all up to mo <laughs> uh, so that's a great idea chris i really appreciate you saying that and um i can see what we can do about getting at least one computer signed in to just let people yeah. know what's going on it's a that's a great idea well i just i i don't know how the whole technology thing works but i know when you come in there's um there's a monitor there in the hallway. Mm. So I don't know if like, maybe you could wheel over one of those carts, you know, the, we used to call them the technology carts when I was in school, but you know, that has a laptop or whatever on and maybe they can plug it into the monitor and then it can be projected, you know. I think it's gonna be, it could be maybe projected, but somebody couldn't actually use the keyboard because of COVID. Right, so. it would be a one-way communication. You could hear what was going on, but not necessarily yeah. participate type deal. I, yeah, Lindley could totally um, talk to Pam and, and work that out with her for sure. Cool. It'd be interesting. Did you, uh, Owen, yeah. do you have a question? Well, just if we're thinking about projecting, Brad and um, Jesse and I have been talking about doing outdoor projections on the side of Brad's building because we have a huge like professional grade project projection device, uh, projector, I guess it's called, um, it's digital. And so his wall is newly painted really white and we could do like even select board meetings, we could project over Zoom at night, you know, and people could hang out and I don't know. But if you guys are ever interested in that, we're thinking about doing movie nights outside. <laughs> um, but if we wanted to do something that was about town engagement or civic engagement, um, that would be awesome. I think Brad would be super into it too. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. That's a good suggestion. Do we lose Lindley? I think so, but yeah. she'll be back. Well, I mean, I, I think the great thing is that, you know, that we're keeping pie alive. And, <laughs> and, and if I remember right, oh, geez, I don't know. What was it? It's not quite 10 years ago when we started pie, but somewhere around there. I don't know. Um, you know to bring back, you know, 
She's back. Here she is. So, so yeah, that. so Lindley can line. talk to Pam about what can happen at the polls and all that, so. Yeah, and I, I can find out about, I sorry, I lost you right as you were saying about the monitor, but I can um, talk to mm -hmm. the guy in charge of that and see maybe we can get access to it. I was just saying because of COVID, you couldn't have 12 people touching a laptop, but if he could project it somehow for you. Yeah, yeah and ask Pam, you know, obviously it's going to depend uh, Pam's opinion. She is the election officials, you know, to see where it could be. So people aren't clogging up the works, but you know, Pam, she, you know, if you give her a call or email her Lindley, she'll, mm -hmm. you guys can work out something. Yeah, I'll, I'll work with her on that. I like that idea. Yeah. All right. Normally it's the town moderator is who town meeting <laughs> is his election to oversee. But in this case, we bypass that. So it's, it's Pam. So. Right. Well, the, uh, we don't have any appointments tonight because we kept it short um, because of the informational portion of the meeting. Uh, but we do have um, the final resignation that we had in, anticipating for the uh, Robert Young for the Bethel Royalton transfer station. So that was, um, you know, we had anticipated seeing resignations from all three members. Um, you know, currently Dave has agreed to um, to be a part of that board, um, at least in a temporary fashion. Um, but we will be, you know, looking for two members of the community um, to engage um, or be a part of the transfer station board um, as it's um, as it was designed. So we did put a posting on Front Porch Forum, and I know Lindley graciously volunteered to also attend the March meeting, just to, so Dave wasn't alone. And um, I did have someone. Um, I did, I did, um, end up, um, getting, hearing from Adam Sappern, um, and he might be interested, he might be in the interest in the planning commission, or he might be interested in the, um, the RTS board. I don't know. So he's right. going to do, I said that I would send him links for both meetings and he needs to attend one or two to see what works for him. But so far that's the only option. And, you know, we will have some select board members sitting on the board for now. Uh, I mean, the, the intention for that board um, from both towns is to have non-select board um, citizens of the town to be on that board. That's, that's the idea behind it and would be the goal. Um, I would say, you know, anybody that has, you know, decent budgeting, um, financial skills, um, those are probably some of the top uh, skills for that. Yep. You know, if you're all, also just willing to learn and sit there and listen and and uh, you know just represent your community on that, that's you know all we could ask for. So, and then you're kind of a liaison between the transfer station and the select board. So, um, we, but, but yes. yeah. Chris. To be to be a voting member, you've got to be approved by the select board, appointed by the select board to be a voting member of the down there. So I mean, anybody right. can go, but there's unless they're not if they're not approved, appointed, they cannot vote. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Mo, do you think that um, so since Dave Eddie agreed to the term for a year, um, do you think that the board needs to temporarily appoint Lindley to attend one meeting? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. It, yeah, she's going to vote. Okay. That way she can vote. Well, maybe after you guys make a motion to accept Robert's resignation, Chris, you could also <clears throat> get a motion to appoint Dave for one year and Lindley temporarily. Um, and Adam Sappern was just going to attend to see if he even wanted to be appointed. So he, we're not looking for anything for him. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a good point. Mo knows the certainly knows ins and outs of the interlocal better than anybody. So usually, well, usually, uh, you, usually it's uh, appointments after the, the first meeting after town meeting that when the select board appoints different committees and whatnot. Usually. Right, right. But <laughs> since she's good, since we know these two are going to do March, we could take care of it tonight and just wrap it up because when, when is the next meeting for the transfer station Mo? Do you know? It's the Wednesday after your select board meeting after town meeting. So you could theoretically appoint people at the next meeting if we wanted okay. to, but 
And I was just thinking for expediency and you knew both yeah. players, right. but, um, but yeah, that's, um, but thank you, Mo. That's because we talked about Dave doing it for a year, but no, we didn't officially, you guys didn't officially appoint him. So um, mm -hmm. that's good to know. Okay. Okay. We went through that. Right. So I would just, I would entertain a motion to accept uh, Robert Young's resignation um, from the Bethel Royalton Transfer Station Board, effective the 3rd of March, 2021. So move. So move. With regret. Uh, with regret, thank you for your service. Yeah, absolutely. I know Robert, he'd been on the board for how many years, Mo? Five? Three. Three. No, three. So and do you want me to add Mo and, not Mo, do you, do you want me to add Dave and Lindley about this appointment to your next agenda? Since it's not listed here, what would you like to do? I don't think there's oodles of people knocking each other down to try to get here. Uh, <laughs> so I guess, you know, I guess that would depend on the board. I mean, if Dave and Lindley are fine with the appointments tonight, we could do that. Um, you know, I our uh, resignation, all three of us take back the 3rd of March. Yeah. Yep. I don't know if that makes any difference. So it could be the wording of the motion, Mo. You could say effective 3 4. You know, um, you appoint Dave Eddie for one year and Lindley, you know, whatever. Well, even if, even if we appoint Lindley for a year and let's say she only stays there for three months while there's some transitioning going on, I mean, it's not not the end of the world, you know, I mean, it, I, I don't, I don't mind stepping, I don't mind stepping into the position. My comment to Therese, and I think this is relevant for the whole board. It was really just that I know as a board, we've been talking about not having it populated with board members and seeing right. that Dave was already sort of thrown his hat in the ring. I didn't want to also do that and then have it exactly what we were saying we didn't want. But if, if everyone's comfortable with it, I'm happy to serve and it can just be an appointment of a year. And then when we find a replacement, I'll resign or Dave can, you know, we can figure that out at that time. Yeah, I think that makes sense because you're in an awkward position as of the third with all three BRTS members. That leaves all three of the royalty members, but I don't think they can make decisions without on their own. I think they need to have a couple of members from Bethel present, don't they, Mo? Two. No, uh, they got to have a quorum of four members, so so they they couldn't hold a meeting with just their membership. Mm -hmm. So they would need but, one, mm -hmm. so they need at least Dave, and if not, a couple people. You're outvoted all the time. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. exactly. Makes sense. Well, we we could uh, nominate Doug. He's got some time on his hands. <laughs> Thank you, but. Uh, <laughs> got plans. <laughs> I got plans. So, have we advertised, or are we going to advertise for those positions? Uh, I did. Yep, I put something out on Front Porch Forum for um, uh, the Planning Commission, which is always a you know something I'm stumping for. Yeah. And, uh, so, the Planning Commission and the BRTS, and that's where I got. Um, I think Adam was interested in possibly the planning, and so I sent him both and said, "Here, come to both meetings." and so, so far, just one. So, yeah, and these are basically, we're saying that Dave's agreed to one year and Lindley's a temporary because otherwise you're going to be outvoted constantly. We need to have, we need to have two people represent um, the board. Yeah, we need, we need to have two citizen type. And we agree, but until we get that, we need, we need two people showing up at these meetings so that we have a say in what's happening at the transfer station. Right. Um, so I think that making a, a motion to appoint Dave for, a, you know, both for a year, at least it gets us two people there. And, and I can right. see Mo nodding in agreement. But as soon as we get citizens, we will, you know, I'm sure happily people will bow out. But and, and Royalton currently has two board members sitting. Uh, they do. They do. So I guess and it's not the end of the world. Um, no, we just need to, we need body well, it, it just it ends up looking fishy and, and yeah maybe, oh here yeah. Not, maybe fishy is not the right word but you know what i mean yeah for us it's just tough because we don't have people coming out of the woodwork as we all know to volunteer so 
if David mm -hmm. Lindley just step in at least to get us through a couple months until we can find, if we found three new people, I'm sure Dave and Lindley would happily walk. Oh in. yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just drumming up people. So yeah. um, it's You're not going to fall out of the sky. <laughs> we need yeah. to protect our interest and to do that, we need two people. Great. Um, Especially during the whatever process is going to happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So is there a motion on the table to appoint uh, Dave and Lindley to one year on the Bethel Royalton Solid Waste Board? So move. I'll, I'll second that. Jeez. That, Mo's last act of duty is to appoint you, Lindley, to something. <laughs> I mean, I have no, yeah. I feel so much fair. It's just not that Dave or Lindley can vote on that. Payback. Uh, it's Mo and me and, <laughs> yeah. and Chris. Chris, vote no. Okay. Chris, vote no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, Joanne just got back to me and said Doug has got plenty of available time. Oh, uh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Really? So, <laughs> That's new so, uh, so we all, all in favor with uh, Dave and Lindley? That's uh, I. Uh, We're good. Welcome. All right. So we got that uh, town manager's report. I just updated you on a couple things. Um, one of them was we are going to be purchasing a 2015 Dodge Charger to replace the cruiser that was totaled um, for 11000 So it's going to cover, um, we received insurance money of just shy of that by a couple hundred bucks. So basically it's, you know, one will pay for the other. The Dodge, uh, I want to say a big thanks to Justin Cram, our other, our new constable and, and Oscar. These two drove to New York the first time, tried out a cruiser, came, you know, which didn't pan out. And then um, just uh, Oscar's out on medical leave right now. He had to have some emergency surgery. And um, Justin drove to Massachusetts to try out this one. And, and this is the one he's going to go back and get it um, this, this weekend. So, which was great. And it's not going to take a lot of equipment. We already have equipment from the other cruiser. Well, the cruiser was totaled. The equipment was fine. This also is going to come with some stuff. We also have a budget, uh, general fund in the general fund budget of like they got thousand dollars for the cruiser. So it may need tires, but nothing is going to come out of the capital fund. Hence why I didn't need a motion or anything from you guys because I'm we're not spending any capital money. Mm -hmm. um, after the last meeting, I did sign the agreement for the Forester with AJ Fallensby for Quimby Forest. Um, there had mentioned, he had mentioned an access issue possibly with Camp Brook Forest. Uh, so I did give that to the class four road committee to take a peek at. Um, so to see about <clears throat> the access to that, that could become a, just a forest that we can't cut because if we can't access it, we're mm. we can do it a different way. Um, finalizing the RFP for the architect for the town garage. Uh, big thanks to Lucian Hinkle for his help with that. Um, I sent it out for hint to him last Friday. He did get back to me with an email. I need to make a couple of adjustments and then that'll go out. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the draft uh, RFP for the permanent Pinello bridge is sent to FEMA for theirs information. Um, Tim and I met with Aldrich and Elliot and um, Willie Nickerson, I believe from the state um, for the 60% review meeting for our preliminary engineering on the next phase of the water system upgrade. We still don't know what's out there for funding yet. Obviously, we got a great deal this time. We have to see. Um, I did talk to Wayne Elliott about, uh, you know, a lot of times when a president is new and they're trying to um, do economic development, they will send out infrastructure money. Uh, when President Obama was elected, he did what we coined the phrase of era money, um, and that was 50% forgiveness for shovel ready projects. So something we need to consider here is making sure that this project is shovel ready. We did get a, which is a planning loan for 16,600. We may be at this point, we should just move forward with the design. That way, mm -hmm. if President Biden did that, we want to be primed and ready to take advantage of any money that's coming down the pike. So right. he also, um, Willie wasn't sure right now of the um, lead subsidy and things like that. So we'll have to, 
figure. We'll, we'll keep you in the loop and we'll figure that out as it comes. But right now the state isn't promising any money, anything right now. So we'll have to see what comes out. Mm -hmm. um, and we submitted the Better Connections grant. A big thank you to Nicole Sear and Rebecca Sanborn Stone. That went out under the wire on Friday. So that's good. We'll should know the middle of March um, about that. Okay. Uh, I submitted a structures grant for the Camp Brook slash watershed br road bridge right there, which is the one from last year that we didn't get. And um, I'm looking at another bridge project. There's another bridge on Peavine just after the slope work. That's a small one. And so we may work, uh, submit my structures grant on that. We're my second structures grant. Lindley. Um, just, I wanted to follow up on the Better Connections grant um, yep. because I've heard some feedback from folks and I think that it's important that the select board as a whole has the whole information on this grant and what it is, but also what is to come from it because there's a lot of misconception of it is a planning grant. So it is really just about, we will receive information um, about like how to do accessibility better and, and all of the things that we applied for within the grant. It's really just an informational grant, but there's a lot of, I've been hearing a lot of negative feedback saying, well, why are we doing these things that aren't actually making any changes? This is one of those grants that you have to apply for this grant first in order to be eligible for further funding that will come after this, that will be for those things that they recommend in the first grant. And if you don't do the first grant, you can't apply for the second grants. And so if if you're hearing people saying mm -hmm. things like that of, you know, why are we spending time and money on just information that actually isn't funding the fixes that we might need or helping the businesses or the, the town pay for the infrastructure needs, mm -hmm. that is part of this. It's, it's just another, phase and another step in that process. And I just wanted to kind of get that out so that- I, I uh, do think, I mean, I think that's right. But you also are gonna get some information. Like we are gonna get a plan. Really, that's all we need for, for doing we're the $30,000 for the clean water. I was hoping we're gonna get engineering. That was my impression. We're not, I don't need engineering. I just need a plan. And once someone figures out that plan, we can build it from that. So that's gonna be good. The other thing is the economic piece. You will get something solid from that right where it sounded like my explanation I received was that um, correct me if I'm wrong that if they do this to figure out what businesses they think are going to be viable in Bethel that's a solid information correct that's what I was told yeah <clears throat> so it'll be good and um, so yeah the, so the grant went out and it was a ton of support everybody wrote letters of support so I'd be surprised if we didn't get it I'm honestly, and Rebecca, uh, Rebecca, obviously, and Nicole are very good at writing. So I think they did. I was happy with, you know, obviously I did some pieces of it and, um, but they, they did a lot. So it was good. You wrote letters and so, but thank you for the clarification. That's good. If somebody's getting feedback. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, so that's so Therese, one, one thing I just wanted to mention the, the Quimby forest, <clears throat> I just wanted to reiterate my concern about the access road and the traffic, the truck traffic and the logger traffic that's going to take place along the ridge road, the uh, ridge uh, going up through there, you know, and really trying to pay attention to what's going to happen to that road uh, going up, up and in there for that access with the heavy equipment that's going up through there. I agree. And we're going to meet up there. Um, it'll be the road foreman and myself and uh, Farron Griffin and AJ Fallensby. And right now the cup, the family that live that visits up there generally maybe comes up twice a year in the winter and that's it. And they're talking about winter access. Um, I did restate in my um, exchange with uh, AJ Fallensby that um, you know, I was raised, you know, a family with a, a logger and uh, <laughs> they're nuts, but I, I'm really concerned. Yeah. Sometimes they're crazy and their <laughs> truckers are even crazier, but yeah. uh, God bless yeah. them. But there is a wicked drop off. So I did tell AJ that again and just said, look, you know, I really have a concern about Ringe and winter access. I understand what he's saying about the other road, but we'll know more about that, Paul, and I'll certainly report more back to the select board yeah. about, um, 
about that. And I apologize, Wayne. I know you're a logger. I didn't mean any offense by that. I you you know you know what I mean. <laughs> well, I think just the access from from the access from Ridge to Lilyville, you know, yeah. Brook Road. Uh, it, and I know those folks are only up there, you know, a couple of times or however much per year. But still, mm -hmm. um, I think it's all due process that we we try to figure out a good way to not tear that road up too yeah. badly. Well, and Chris um, knows too. We did a bunch of work to ringe um, up the class yeah. three road. We're oh yeah, oh that. yeah. And I also no, I've been up there. It's a, and some people do loggers don't. I think it's sometimes they get a bad rap. And in my experience, there's a lot of loggers that leave roads in better shape than they found them. And we yeah. certainly have, and Mo's shaking his head yes. And there's certainly, we have the ability to say, this is what the road looks like. And this is what our standard is. And we didn't put in those new culverts and all that to have somebody trash it. So, you know, it's also going to be part of picking the right logger. So when we do the RFP and it's, you know, certainly, but we'll have more information, yeah. Paul. And, and well, I, oh, I just wanted to throw that out there. No. And I think it's a good concern to have. I, I have my own, so we'll, we'll definitely um, address those. And, and um, so I, it's definitely a, a rough road and, yeah. You know, when I helped do the, did some of the FEMA work up there, I mean, midsummer in July, and I, it took four wheel drive for me to get up in my truck. So, mm -hmm. um, it's a pretty, mm -hmm. but I will say, that, the others. <laughs> I will say that that road is night and day of what it was used to be. I yeah. mean, we hadn't maintained that road, you know, other than just passing it. In years so it, no and even that little piece of fare that mm -hmm. we owned and where you came yeah. range and chris got the life scared out of him there was some lady walking up the just appeared out of nowhere it was like a berry picking road it was like so oh, boom yeah. someone was right there yeah so we definitely have the same concerns paul i do as you so um i don't want to see any that go backwards yeah. for sure but I, but I also think, you know, some of the things that I'm talking to it last time is there's, there's some really good opportunities too, right? There's, you know, by having some of this logging take place that there's some accessibility, um, pro, you know, I guess uh, benefits that we'll get out of this with, you know, maybe some trail usages and things like that, that we had been wanting to do that, you know, won't essentially cost us anything, so. Right. The other thing is, too, is making the landing into some parking for people who mm -hmm. want to hike. So there's definitely some right. things there. But well, that, that, that means that it's going to be increased access by folks going up through this. So even more important to uh, make sure that we leave the leave that road in a in a place where folks can still access it and not tear it all to shreds. Yeah, I'm hoping that it's better than it is now. You know, the first part of it is good because we've worked on it, but that last piece is going to need some work. Um, so whether we grade and bring some fill and take care of that piece, because too, like you're saying, Paul, people are going to be pleasure cars yeah. that are going to want to access that. And it's not going to be a big parking area. I think AJ had mentioned what, a couple of cars. So we're not looking at a big space there, but you're right. It will increase, uh, you know, the accessibility or the increase of the use of the road. Yeah, because so, we already we already know that there are, are jeeps and big trucks and whatever going up through there and and uh, intentionally are not tearing it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's that's why I wanted to have the class four roads posted in the spring to keep people off of them while they can tear it up. Otherwise, it'll be just a rutted mess like it is now up on that class four part. That's right. And, and Mo had said that, and I actually have the uh, printout from VLCT and it's in the select board file um, for us to, to do that. I think I'd had it in for March. So we um, definitely need to do that. I talked to Alan today about signage and I did tell Alan that I believe the select board would be posting some of these class four roads and weight limits. And so I had the printout from VLCT um, Mo that's telling us all about what we can do up there. And I know the class four road committee was also in favor of that. That's something uh, Mr. Wright right. had come in about too. So, yep, that's going on a March agenda. You could stick around, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so, no. Oh, yeah. Class four committee. There's another yeah. one. There's, yeah. Mo is getting out of Dodge. That's, that's it. We had the uh, meeting minutes from both the 8th and the 15th. Did anybody have any amendments to the meeting minutes or are they good to approve as written? Uh, I had one. Um, 
From which which day, Mo, uh, Paul? I got to pull out. Oh, hang on. Thank you. I think I have both in the packet. I need to... It was one place where you said that Chris made a motion. Oh. He, and he he doesn't usually make motions. He doesn't, but he did. He did? He did that day, yes. Oh. Yep, because you're right. It's unusual, but I remember he did that day. Okay, I'm not I don't have the page right in front of me. No, but that's no. Not exactly what you're talking about. And he that did was the motion for the um the website. Yeah. It was. It was about the website for the Equity and Inclusion oh. Commission committee. Yeah, I didn't even realize I had made that motion until Teresa told me. And yeah, you did because you were like, "Those were gonna." Because there. usually, I mean, I, and, and I, I know I did, and but usually I don't. You know, there are a lot of chairs that do make a lot of motions, and I don't usually. No, I also think the vote was going to go one way or the other, and you weren't sure, so he did. Yeah. All right, Paul. Good. Okay, well, that was that was the only thing that I saw. I don't have the page right in front of me. That's no. okay. I I do. I have it. So. Yeah, I can't find it right now, but I know what you were yeah, talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yep, it's, yeah, where is that? And then the only other, well, the, the other thing, we saw minutes in there from the September 23rd, 2019 special meeting of the White River Solid Waste Board. Oh, I don't know. I'm not quite sure why that was in the packet. Unmuted. <laughs> I don't know. Let me look and see. I have <laughs> they, they appointed uh, Jen to be the. Um, oh, I know why that was in there. That was for somebody else. And uh, somebody uh, was looking for some information. And probably um, Kelly saw it on her desk. She probably just tossed it up there because there's one shelf on near the top of Kelly's desk. You know where it is, Paul. And we throw anything for the select board in there. Yeah, um, really it was it was one of the BRTS members from Royalton looking for something, and so it accidentally okay. must have gotten. Oh, okay. okay. Oh. All right. <laughs> I didn't even see it when I copied it. Thank you. Um, oh, so that was a mistake. Um, it was something that one of the Royalton members wanted. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So we we're good on both of those then. Yeah. Okay. Make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then we had in the back, um, there was meeting from the rec committee, um, the energy committee. Um, there was the article that was in- Valley News article. Valley News. And yeah. then- um, I also put in there the information charging for recycling in Vermont that came from the state of Vermont. And I mm -hmm. had uh, Kelly put that on front porch forum because we'd obviously received a bunch of comments about people wanting to know why they were paying for recycling. And um, so I thought that this was really well written by um, the gentleman at the state. And um, uh, Jen had sent it to me. And so we, we, mm -hmm. uh, decided to put it out because I thought it was really informative and lets people know, look, you know, when Act 48 started in 2012, what the um, markets were looking for, like in 2012, and then the fact that the markets continue to do poorly. So I thought it was good information. And the other stuff was just the FYI on a um, Act 250 permit for the school, which you all knew about because that was the trails piece that once right. the was done Act 250, always in Act 250, so. Yep. So that was it. So that was everything. Anything else anybody wanted to bring up? Now's the time to do it. Uh, Joanne has something she wanted to say. Hi, hey, everybody. Hi, Can you hear me? Yes. How y'all doing tonight? Hey, um, good, the reason Doug didn't get in early tonight, the number was wrong at this on the um, Bethel Town page. Okay. So I wonder how many people would have liked to have attended and didn't get in here. That's, okay, that's all I gotta say. Everybody else came nope. in. I texted with Kelly because I, I sent her what I had and it's wrong. Okay, I'll go back in and look. the phone number, Joanne, or the meeting number. The the um the meeting number was incorrect. Okay. It yeah. was missing one of the numbers. 
Oh, damn. And then Kelly shot me a text that somebody sent a screenshot of their phone. And yeah. there was another number in there. Okay, it was me. Okay. So, um, thank you. Because I was copying for her off from my what I published. So I'll go looking, but thank you. I, um, I, she texted yeah. me, I texted her so she could text you. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Well, I, I just, for even to just telephone in, you couldn't do it. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. Thanks. For whatever it's worth. When I tried to log in, I went to a word document and there was a link in the word document that I yeah. used that was correct. But yeah, uh, and that's what I put out. So, all right, good. Yeah. Thank you, Jean. Um, so I'm not sure where, I don't know, because that's what I put on the web. That's what I put on the um, website myself. So I'll double check, but thank you, you very we, much. We what? didn't try using the link. We just tried using the number to get in. Okay, The thank meeting you. number. Yeah. Oh, All I right, thank you. you. Uh, oh, I got how she did it. Okay, cool. It's one of the things I've learned with Zoom, uh, because sometimes Zoom generates the numbers at random. And if it starts with a zero, often when you translate that to a different program, it takes the zero out when it's the first number. And so you have to like, add it back in. Um, so yeah. oh. that may not be the issue, but. Okay. It, it was in the set, you know how there's three sets of numbers, three numbers, then four numbers, then a couple yep. more. It was in the, th in the full second set or the second set of numbers. It had. Okay. Thank you. And I've been checking my email. Numbers in it. All right. Awesome. It only had three on the website. Yeah. Okay. No big deal. We did get in there, but. Mo, well, thank you. And I've been out. checking my email all night throughout our meeting because we did put in the town report that if you couldn't get in to email me. So I have been going back and forth checking, but I'm glad you made it in. Yeah. So thank, thank you. you for sticking with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. I couldn't have done it. <laughs> well, Kelly texted me, so I was trying to get it out there, but all right, we'll see. So thank you. It's a good thing to remember, Lindley, too, about the zero. Great. Anything I move we adjourn. <laughs> so if no one seconds, Mo has to stay, right? <laughs> yes. Forever. I'll second. <laughs> I like you, Mo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Thank get you. Get up early, get ready to do some snow removal one morning. That's right. Therese, Therese. Yes, yes Mo. I got a question for you. Uh, do you want me to come in and sign uh, whatever I've got to sign up to now? That would be great. Thank okay, you. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a couple stragglers, so that would be good. Yeah, yeah, I know you had you had most of them a couple weeks ago, but that would be great. I mean, if you don't want yeah, them, you just, don't have to. I'm going to get the majority yeah. of the signatures, but right because all you need is three anyways so. yeah it's up to you if you want to come in and do it that'd be great if you don't it's not a problem mo because you're right i'll have three signatures anyway so that's right okay you do Thank whatever you. the however the spirits moves you how's that i probably will <laughs> there you go all right thank, thank you again mo all right. good night Hi. thank you mo